This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Sponsorship provided by AWeber.com, GetFlywheel.com, and Wistia.com. Hello, welcome to another edition of Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Before we get started, I wanted to point you over to a new campaign that we've started here on phillytech.org. Uh, it's over at uh, patreon.com. If you're a fan of this and uh, other podcasts that we feature on the network, uh, well, we'd, we'd like for you to help us grow, uh, help us uh, keep the lights on, so to speak, keep the servers running. Um, so if you feel strongly about the, the uh, podcasts that uh, we produce here, and there's more coming on the way, if you uh, take a look at our website at phillytech.org, you'll see that we've got uh, all sorts of uh, uh, shows coming down, the, uh, coming down the pike to you, uh, aside from the regular series such as this one. So uh, please consider uh, donating whatever you, uh, whatever you can uh, help out with on uh, patreon.org and there's a link to the website for you there and um, well thanks a lot um, okay now let's uh, start the show like I always do when I talk about the FAA um, I don't have a whole lot this particular episode to talk about however um, let me click on here uh, what uh, the reason news that happened is that the FAA has now as I've mentioned they're kind of taken the whack-a-mole approach to honoring uh, exemptions for commercial uh, entities uh, to operate their drone uh, drone services with uh, extreme restrictions, uh, including uh, requiring a full pilot's license. But anyway, they have now granted uh, eight more exemptions for commercial use of drones. Um, of these companies, uh, there's one here that's for flare stack inspections, uh, whatever flare stacks are. Um, another one for aerial photography and surveys, and uh, a couple more that have to do with uh, film and television production. So again, at least that's baby steps, uh, but we've we've still got a long way to go before we can get uh, you know get get reasonable uh, rules in place. Um, speaking of those rules, uh, let me bring you to another story. Uh, I reported earlier that uh, in my last episode that uh, DJI, the makers of the Phantom, uh, which uh, uh, unfortunately was the drone that uh, crashed on the White House lawn, as I reported, and as you probably already know, um, they in immediately instituted a firmware upgrade that takes advantage of what's called uh, geofencing, uh, which allows them to have no fly zones uh, incorporated into the craft so that it simply will not take off in those areas. They uh, made a, a complete a geofence around Washington, D.C. Well, they have since um, had all sorts of problems with that firmware, uh, causing uh, erratic flight behavior and uh, making things a lot worse. So they immediately pulled it and so currently you can still fly around Washington DC. Um, don't know if that's going to be permanent or not uh, or if they're going to try again uh, with a future uh, firmware upgrade. Uh, actually, um, about, speaking of geofencing, um, there's more stories coming out about that, that there is a, uh, there's a website that will allow you to geofence your own property. And could this be what we see in our near future? Uh, some of the drone manufacturers like DJI are already on board with it, uh, where you could submit your property uh, location to them and be part of a no-fly uh, no fly zone where the drone simply will not fly over your property. And imagine uh, everybody doing this. So it's very hard to fly them at all. But uh, anyway, I'm just finding out about that, so I'm going to do some more research on that. And on the next uh, episode of my podcast, I'm going to go more in depth about uh, geofencing. So uh, there we have it right there. Uh, now uh, let's, let's talk about, uh, well, there's been some good and bad press uh, with drones lately. Let's talk about the good side. Um, you may have seen this on Good Morning America. Uh, in cooperation with DJI, they took a DJI Inspire um, over an active volcano. Uh, and you can see here some of the footage here. Um, 
Uh, it's it's it, it they actually lost it from about a mile away. That was as close as they were as humans are allowed to get to this active volcano. It's about a mile away, and they flew about. Um, uh, 200 to 300 feet over top of the uh, volcano. Now, this this was a very big success for DJI and for showing the usefulness of drones. It was a very uh, ooh ah kind of uh, kind of experience to watch this. Uh, you know, that was kind of never before seen uh, footage of this uh, active volcano. And well, quite frankly, I'm impressed uh, that the DJI Inspire uh, was able to handle what must have been pretty, uh, pretty impressive heat um, and wind conditions up there. So very good for DJI. Um, that's that was a that was a positive press for the drone industry. Uh, I'm going to take a quick sponsor break right now. When I come back, we're going to talk about well what ended up not being such good positive press for the drone industry. So um, I'll see you in just a couple seconds. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at fullytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. Aweber is local to the Philly region, helping entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. Go to aweber.com slash phillytech to find out more. And by Soho Mail professional, low-cost email with business class features and security. Okay, welcome back. Well, before I get back to talking about uh, the uh, bad press story I want to talk about, uh, I, I, I can't believe I almost forgot this. Right before I started uh, recording this, uh, I, got a, uh, I got my present in the mail uh, coming direct from China. Uh, basically, actually, a recommendation uh, from a uh, viewer uh, they told me about this great uh, little uh, toy quadcopter from JJRC, and here it is right here. This is this is the new guy. This is uh, very similar. It's about this actually the same size as the, as my uh, SEMA back there. Um, uh, this is the JJRC uh, H12C uh, quadcopter. Uh, now. A couple of things I'm really excited about trying this one out. And again, I just got it uh, today. So I don't have a name for it, don't have a face on them yet. But uh, anyway, uh, it has a 5 megapixel 1080p camera on it as opposed to the 2 megapixel camera that's on the SEMA. So I'm really curious to see what the uh, quality of the video uh, is going to be like compared to the SEMA. The other thing that it has is a what's called headless mode. Uh, unlike the SEMA and a lot of other copters, um, uh, what headless mode allows you is that regardless of which way the craft is facing, if it's facing this way and you move forward on the throttle, it'll of course move forward. But if it's facing, say, this direction and you move forward on the throttle, it will still move forward as opposed to moving this way, which can be very, very confusing for even the intermediate flyer uh, to get used to. So I'm um, very, uh, and it also has a return to home uh, safety feature on it too. Uh, for $80, uh, I'm very interested to see how, um, see how that works. So you can definitely guarantee that you will be seeing uh, once the weather gets a little bit more hospitable here uh, in the Philly region, I will definitely be doing a, a full demo of that camera and report back. Um, it's only available in China right now, though, so it took about three to four weeks before I got it. But uh, anyway, that's that's my. Uh, I'm going to be playing with that as soon as the show's over. So now let's uh, let's continue on. I uh, talked about the uh, good press coming from uh, Good Morning America about uh, drones. Now let's talk about the the bad press, uh, and it comes courtesy of Fox News, uh, not one of my favorite uh, networks. Um, I hate to tell you, but they basically they, they are very sensationalized. Uh, they 
are set to engage you as a viewer, and that's all they're interested in. And here's some proof of that. Um, they uh, obviously, with the uh, what uh, the drone crashing at the White House, they wanted to do a segment about it. So they brought in a uh, a tech journalist from Popular uh, Science who brought a DJI Phantom 2 into the studio, and he's talking about drone safety. Um, if you now looking at this segment. Uh, what I talk about uh, them trying to be sensational about it, uh, you know, if you notice their lower third titles, um, how about this one? Uh, technological threat poses serious risks to civilians. Big Brother is hovering. Come on, give me a break. Um, that they're just trying to create uh, a story as opposed to just reporting about one. But they are uh, talking about safety, and the irony about this is, is that, uh, well, the, uh, the tech journalist uh, wasn't, uh, he admittedly wasn't a very good flyer, and the drone, uh, he lost orientation of uh, Phantom, and it crashed into a camera operator. So, uh, yeah, so the, the irony of talking about drone safety, and it, it, it crashes in the studio, so... Um, but uh, anyway, that's that's kind of like the negative story, and I'm sure Fox just went off with it, uh, you know, about how dangerous they are. Uh, they mentioned about how uh, an operator was killed a couple years ago. Well, they were killed by a powerful RC helicopter, not even close to these types of drones. Uh, no one has been killed by any of these things. Um, but, of course, they'll, they'll leave that kind of part out of the news. So anyway, that's, uh, that's that story there. So you have a little bit of the good and the bad uh, press-wise uh, for drones uh, this month. And I'll, I'll keep you in touch as I see more uh, stories, good and bad, uh, about our, our technology. So now, uh, let's, uh, let's finish up here. Let's have a little bit of fun here. Um, golfer, a professional golfer, Jason Day, uh, Australian golfer, um, he uh, was asked to do a commercial uh, by Adidas. Well, what they wanted to do was they suspended a small uh, foam sign uh, above uh, the ground uh, with a DJI Phantom. And they asked for him to try to hit it. Well, he was unsuccessful at hitting the uh, piece of foam, but he was successful at hitting something. So yes, I'm not sure uh, that commercial doesn't kind of say whether he actually ended up killing the drone or if it uh, came back to life with uh, very uh, little, uh, little, uh, little problems. Um, so anyway, that's all I have for the show. Uh, one more thing I have to tell you is that uh, right now my, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit grounded right now with my big drone, my beloved uh, DJI Phantom, uh, Humpty D. I put him under the knife or under the screwdriver, I guess you can say. Uh, what I'm doing is what's kind of popular if you have a Phantom 1 and you're an enthusiast, you, you basically upgrade it. Uh, you put it in a Phantom 2 shell and put Phantom 2 propellers on it. That, uh, there's, there's more space in there, more space for bigger batteries uh, that can double my flight time, and uh, for some other things, such as I'm gonna have a uh, telemetry display now on my viewfinder when I fly. So right now, as you see, here's a little, here's some uh, video here of me uh, working on it in progress, and I'm fully documenting it. So in coming weeks, uh, I definitely uh, intend to uh, show you the full documentation. So if you have a DJI Phantom 1 and you're, you kind of know your way with electronics a little bit and you're a little adventurous, uh, it certainly has been an adventure for me so far. But uh, he, he will, uh, I have done some tests so far and have them mostly back together and he will fly again. So I'm just looking forward to the weather improving. Uh, middle of winter in this harsh, uh, Philly region, the best time to uh, take the drone apart and uh, do the upgrades on it since I can't fly them anyway. So anyway, uh, that's all I have for uh, this show. And again, I want to encourage you, if you like what you see here on, uh, on this uh, podcast network, uh, please uh, consider going over to patreon.com uh, and uh, consider financially supporting uh, our, our goal and our mission here of uh, providing you with a uh, great informative uh, tech-based uh, podcast and information uh, based in and about the Philly uh, region. 
So, and again, if you uh, want to get in touch with me, uh, you can uh, please f uh, follow for you to, uh, um, to follow me on Twitter. Uh, you see my address there at drone guy Tom, or you can send me an email at drone guy at tebweb.com, T E B W E B.com. And I hope to hear from you and uh, let me know what you think, any questions that I can answer. Uh, I've done a couple of those already in shows, and uh, hope to see you next time.